Hello everyone, it's your girl Columbia. How are you? I'm fine. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, Great Pirate Solomon here, coming to you with the Lady Columbia, and today we're going to do something very different. We're doing a cooking video. Yay! Because who doesn't love to cook? So, a while back before the Great Pirate Solomon and I lived together, um, we used to watch a particular YouTuber, War Corpses, cooking videos. And we dream of the day when we lived together and we had our own little kitchen and we could totally destroy him. Well, today is that day. Today is that day. So, War Corpse did a video where he made breakfast at the wall and it was fucking abysmal. All right? Frozen sausage. What what else did he make? Ham steak, like shitty ham steak, like Oscar Mayer ham steak. Yeah, 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 and and fuck and raw fucking hash browns. Right? <laughs> they were they were they were just chopped potatoes that he like cooked for two seconds. And he just slops it on a and some toast on white bread. Mm-hmm. And then just slops it on a plate and says, "There you go. There's your breakfast at the wall." Well, we thought we could do way better than that, so. We're going to do a Game of Thrones breakfast. This is going to be kind of a mixture of breakfasts from what they would have in the north to what they would have in the south. Um, a whole nice little menu. So first thing on our menu, what I will be making is the thick cut bacon with apple cakes. And then I will be making um, a couple eggs as well as... Um Corn griddle cakes. Now, you might be thinking, well, you know, Game of Thrones is based on medieval European history, particularly England and France and Spain a little bit. And, well, they didn't have corn in medieval Europe. Well, that you, you would be correct in saying that, but Game of Thrones has mentioned corn. So they do have corn. Um, also, apples. Apples are not something that were super common in medieval um, Western Europe. Um, apples really became big after the discovery of North America because North America is like the bastion of apples. Um, but again, apple capes are another thing that are mentioned in the books. So. Right. And uh, we're particularly making uh, corn griddle cakes because corn, corn cakes and corn breads are um, a food of the poor. Um, and we're doing this at the wall where they you know, clearly don't have a lot of resources necessarily. And uh, as opposed to like making more bread type, you know, biscuits or something like that, corn is easier to make because you don't, it doesn't require expensive dairy products. And I never saw any cows at the wall. Well, to come to think of it, I don't remember. Oh, wait, there's, there's cattle in Game of Thrones. There he is. Okay. Aurochs. Aurochs. But no, like, actual, like, right. North American cows. So, we're going to stop fucking talking and we're going to start fucking cooking. Before we do that, let's uh, just kind of lay out all the ingredients that we have uh, out here. Well, these aren't all of our ingredients either. Are they not? No. Okay. <laughs> well, what we're going to need for this, uh, for obviously for the eggs, we're going to need eggs. Uh, for the corn cakes, we're going to need some vegetable oil, um, some cornmeal, some baking powder, some corn... Actually, no, I think the corn starch is for you. Yes. Um, and some vegetable oil. Yeah, that's it. Um... Also, we're going to have our thick cut bacon, which is not out here. Um, and then for your apple cakes. So for the apple cakes you're going to need, I've got frozen puff pastry just to make it easier. If you feel like you want to make fresh pastry, go right ahead. Um, you're going to need dark and light brown sugar. You're going to need regular sugar, corn starch, two apples. I got four because I'm fancy. And white sugar, regular white sugar, and a little bit of salt. And you're good to go. And, of course, thick cut bacon. I just need the bacon. And just to show up War Corpse, instead of having some, you know, crappy-ass Wonder Bread, I got some good dark bread of the sort that might be, uh, you know, found at the wall. So, now we can stop fucking talking and start fucking cooking. Bala Mogulis. Bala Dojares. All right, everybody, let's get these apple cakes made. I'm going to move this slightly because I'm going to be a little more over here. All right. Boop. Making bacon. So, first thing you're going to need to do is to core and peel your apples. 
and you're going to want to put and you're going to also want to cut these up into relatively bite-sized pieces now i'm doing it super rustic you do it however precise you want to do it now for a little extra zest i put in a lemon ginger tea bag i'm going to let that cook with the apples sort of like a spice pouch you're also going to need sugar and we're going to need dark and light brown sugar and a little bit of salt so i'm going to show you the easy way to do this right you don't want to start mixing this in the bowl that's a lot okay you just came well, let's say you want to make this you know you for breakfast ready for everybody this was two apples by the way guys all right well we, we want to see the pan that's the whole that's the whole big part all right all right a teaspoon so i only need about an eighth a teaspoon i wouldn't even do i'm not even going to do an eighth a teaspoon guys because this is a quarter i'm going to do a pinch of salt you don't need much salt the salt's going to bring out some of the flavor in the apples right and you'll typically find in most recipes for sweet things you're going to find table salt in them all right Oop. We changing all kind of shots today, y'all. Is that better? Is that better? Okay, perfect. You're good. We okay? Yeah. All right. Okay. Work with us, y'all. Work with us. We'll get better. Do more planning next time. All right. an island that would make this a little easier. Well, one thing. Room for an island, but. One thing we're going to probably have. Well, we could buy an island. But it's not really room. Sure. Um. So, what you want is one tablespoon, two tablespoons, three tablespoons, four, it should be roughly a quarter cup. What I like to do is I don't measure measure, I just do enough to cover, right? I'm, I'm that type of cook. I've made this so many times, I, I kind of just know it by heart. You want enough sugar to cover, right? So we got enough sugar to cover. Now, when it comes to your brown sugars, you want about half as much of your brown sugars as you have your white sugars. Now, I didn't open these yet, because you know, first time. Oh, I gotta make it about color. Could you just hand me something to open these with instead of just being a smart ass? That's actually that's probably not the best. Works for what it is. So, I tend to do this by hand all the time. But what you want to do is if you put enough brown or white sugar to cover, you just want about a, a heaping mound of a tablespoon of your dark and of your light sugars. These are going to give it not only a bit of color, they're going to give it a richer flavor, particularly your dark brown. Now, if you're short on, if you're on, if you're at home and you're like, crap, I want to make this, but I have like half the ingredients, don't worry about the light and the brown. Just, just use light or just use dark, right? But in the same amounts, you don't want to use, you don't want to use more brown sugar to compensate for the fact that you don't have light. All right. Take a little bit of that. The cornstarch is for later, and you'll see what the cornstarch is for a little bit later. I'm gonna get a wee bit of water. Not a lot, it's not. A, it's just a splash of water. What you're trying to do here is, you get your splash of water, because the apples are gonna make water, but initially, you don't want your sugar to burn, okay? So I'm gonna put it on the outer rims, and I'm just gonna put a little bit on the sugar itself. Doesn't matter, hot, cold, doesn't matter. And don't worry, it's all gonna be all right. Again, you want to keep your tea bag kind of buried in there. You may even want to cut the chain on it. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to try to kind of keep it above there a little bit. Hopefully it doesn't catch fire. Okay. So I'm going to come back to you guys in a little bit when the apples are a little bit more cooked. All right. But for right now, it's going to take a second. Now, that's your quick way to make apples. You skipped dirtying up a whole bowl. Right? Make sure you stir it. You want to get a good stir on that because you want all your apples coated. Now, if you find out, oh, crap, all my apples aren't coated, or right now I'm finding out, oh, crap, there's not enough juice in here for what I'm trying to do, add more. What you, what you want to make sure is when you, when you, you'll know you've coated them well when all your apples appear brown, right? So not all my apples appear brown yet. I'm going to take this out for just a second. Not all my apples are quite there yet. 
Right, now they're gonna release some water. But I'm gonna add just a wee bit more light brown, just a pinch, so a good size pinch. A light. I'm sorry, that's that's dark. Wait, no, no, that was light. That was dark. See, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing in here. I do know what I'm doing. It's early. It's early. And add a wee bit a wee bit of a pinch of dark. And I'm gonna add a little more white sugar. And you'll see why I'm adding more sugar, because right now you're going, guys, I, you're going, guys, guys, you're killing me. All that sugar, how the fuck am I supposed to live? You're not. Thanks All men. Thing about being healthy. All men must die. Okay? But first, serve yourself. But also serve the red god. Now, all my recipes are in honor of the red god. In any case, what do we say to death? Today. <laughs> Today. All right. You guys will see why I added more sugar. Hopefully, when this water releases from the apples, I'll get a little more sauce. And again, you'll know why I needed more sauce to begin with. All right, because when I do the apple cakes, the sauce that this makes is going to be what bubbles inside of the apple cake. It's going to give you that nice flavor. So I need as much of it as is humanly possible. Now, maybe you find out, crap, I didn't, I didn't cut enough apples. Don't worry about it. Take this off the heat as soon as possible because you don't want the rest of your apples to cook, right? Take this off the heat as soon as possible. Cut yourself some more apples. Add some more sugar and, and some, add some more of your sugars and salt. This is an easy recipe, guys. This is not meant to be some kind of fancy pants bullshit. This is really meant to, like, show up war corpse, but it's meant to also be something that you can cook at home, easy for yourselves and your friends, or family members, or puppies. All right, so we're starting to boil here. Or White Walkers. Or White Walkers, or your Dire Wolf. So. Breakfast at the wall, all of a sudden the White Walkers show up. You don't want to be a bad host. You get to feed them something, right? All right. You don't want them to eat your brains. All right, so this is starting to boil up. That is perfect. I like to keep my apples moving around a little bit, but what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to cover this once it starts to boil, reduce the heat a little bit, because I have this on full blast. Y'all know me. I'm about that fire. For sassy my boy. Fire and blood. So you're going to want to reduce the heat to a simmer. Before your app, you're going to want to feel your apples as much as possible. You don't want them to be super tender. You want them to be just soft because they're also going to continue to cook in the oven, right? So you'll know. Take a bite of your apples when you first start. Take a bite of your apples at the beginning of this. You know, this way sneaky little taste. And then when, they're, when they've been simmering for about five minutes, take a bite. And if you feel like it's just starting to soften up, give it two more minutes. Then take them right off the heat. Again, they're going to continue to cook a little bit. You may want to add more tea bags. This isn't going to add a super lot of flavor, but what it's going to add is a little more spiciness, some lemon flavor, and some ginger flavor. All right. So, be seeing you soon. All right, guys. So, here's a little trick to thicken up any sauce. I love me that thick sauce. Just not even helping. Just not even trying to help. He just did the dishes and now I think he can stand around. Yeah, that's right. You just need a little bit of cold water. So I'm going to use about a quarter cup. Yeah, a little more than that. And a teaspoon of cornstarch. I'm sorry, a tablespoon of cornstarch. I did a heaping one, so I'm going to hold back a little bit. That should be about perfect. I'm gonna stir this, make sure you mix this really well, otherwise your food's gonna come out real corn starchy. And that would be bad. Well, it's sort of like what happens if you, if you don't do the roux egg. Make sure your liquid is super hot. So like right now what I'm gonna do is I'm getting it everywhere too. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna turn up the heat on my apples, super far. And I'm going to slowly add the cornstarch. Just start mixing. You got to keep this mixture moving. When you add cornstarch, you got to keep it moving. Now, 
Now, at first, you're going to be like, this ain't doing shit. All right? Give it a second. Get a nice tight shot on that mix. You see I'm keeping the tea bag in. If you want to remove the tea bag at any point, feel free. You want to make sure this comes back to boil. And just keep it moving. Keep it pushing. Just keep it moving. As, as we say in the bit, keep it pushing, keep it moving. You can see it on the edges start to kind of get thick. See, you scrape the bowl, you scrape the bottom, you can't quite get it up. Like some people we know. Or corpse. <clears throat> Can't get it up if he pays for it and it's violent. Yeah, War Corpse is into some shit. Order, I will. Let me just go ahead and turn this off. I'm going to turn this off. I don't think I'll need much more. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. I'm going to let it sit in the pan for a couple of minutes. Because that wall, as it cools, it'll too start to thicken. Right? So I'm going to let that go for a couple of minutes. Boom! Your apples are done. Okay? So what we're going to do is take them out of here, set them aside, let them cool completely. Then I'm going to come back and I'm going to put them in the puff pastry. Alrighty guys, our mixture has cooled. It's still sitting in the pan. So what we're going to do now is we're going to cut our puff pastry. Now I'm going to cut it lengthwise. You can cut them along the peripheries and I might do a little better with that. But I'm going to be an asshole today because I feel like being an asshole. So I'm going to cut lengthwise. Now this is a little too much, probably a little too much pastry for what we're doing. So you could fold it over. My kitchen, don't worry, my, my counter's clean. I literally just cleaned it. Cookie's a witness. Well, they Lies. Have... Lies and slander. <sighs> no, she did. I'm just fucking with her. Because that's what we do. So I think what we'll do is three. I might not even have enough mixture for three. So we're going to see how much mixture we have. I've got an egg over here. I'm going to do an egg wash. Now, guys, we're doing this super duper fucking like homey today. I do not have a brush. I just checked. I thought I did, but I don't. So, I'm going it up. So, we're doing, we're, we're trying it up today. Okay. I'm not going to show you guys the cracking of the egg, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to crack this egg. I only need its yolk. So, I'm going to do the old fashioned thing where you crack it softly. And then you just exchange the yolk. You're not going to show them the science? It's white genocide. <laughs> You're damn right. Great replacement is real. The great egg placement is real. Okay, so I'm going to give that a soft little bit. Okay, nothing else. That's going to be your egg wash. That's going to move back that way. Yeah. I want the people to see what you're talking about. Do this for you, the people. Stop. Here's your egg wash, guys. All right. Yep. So I might have, so you see, I got my mix here. It's thick and significantly. See, it's nice and syrupy. T-H-I-C-C. -C. Oh, Lord. Now, you don't ever want a lot of, of mix in your, in anything you make puff pastry, anything you make pastry, period. All right, you don't ever want to overfill your pastry. That's a little much, but what the hell, right? For the Game of Thrones and Game of Thrones Lawn tonight. It's Sunday, y'all. We go all You might not see this on a Sunday, but it is Sunday for us. Thank you. So you just want to crimp the edges. So that they're closed. Because you don't want your mix coming out of there. My sweet boyfriend, the Grey Pirate Solomon, is helping me out with them. Okay. 
Now, I would definitely recommend that you get a brush. You can get cheap brushes at places like the dollar store. Here's a, here's a tip, too. My own personal adult playground. Shut up. Things like measuring cups, measuring spoons. You can always find super cheap for a dollar at the dollar store. And what's nice about them is typically they have the Betty Crocker kind. They're actually pretty sturdy. And what happens is if you lose them, if you screw them up in some way, nah, they're a dollar. Run out and buy you some more. Now, you want this egg wash on, right? Because everyone's going to be like, what the fuck are you putting egg on top of this? Your egg wash, make sure it's nice and thinned out. Because you don't want just like cooked egg on top. Your egg wash is going to mean a nice brownness on top. So when these come out, instead of just being kind of bland and Pop-Tart colored, they're going to be nice and fucking brown. And you're done. Now, check on them. For God's sakes, check on them. You may find out that because the apple's already pretty much cooked all the way, you may find out that, you know, the puff pastry's done quicker. So check on them, for God's all right, sake. Lady, oop. All, right. all right, ladies and gentlemen, I just pulled these from the oven. They're not going to be quite 25 minutes, more like 15. Um, and these are your completed apple cakes. Now, I've got a little left in the pan, as you can see here. I might garnish. If you have some left over, garnish do as you choose um i if i do i think i will do a garnish one the great pirate solomon's over here iron he, he's pretending like oh it's all good but he's really over here like just gonna do it on the top drizzle some down the sides well pan biggity bam got that dramatic apple fall off too that was good <laughs> There are your completed apple cakes, everyone. All right, guys, so we're going to prep our bacon now. Uh, we went for a thick cut bacon. I was actually looking for like more traditional, like European style back bacon, but could not find it at the supermarket. Probably could have found it if I went to a butcher shop, but I'm lazy, so. But that's fine. So we get um, thick cut bacon. And we're going to lay it out on a cookie sheet with, or I guess a broiler sheet. Um, you can also use like a cookie sheet if you have like one of those little, you know, racks that sits on the cookie sheet. Now, you might be thinking, well, why aren't you frying this? Um, well, honestly, baked bacon is honestly better most of the time. It's also easier, which is nice. But you ever like go out to restaurants and like, you're always wondering how, how do they keep all this bacon like so crispy and how are they like making it in such big amounts? Because they bake it all. Um, it's easier and honestly most of the time it tastes better and you don't have to stand over the stove getting hot grease spit at you. Mm -hmm. Which is my fetish, but still. Yeah. All right, so we've got uh, a bunch of bacon lined up on our sheet. Then what we're going to do now, what you can do also, if you want to make clean up a little bit easier for you, put the foil on the underneath part. Um, I'm not doing that because we don't have any foil. Oops. But so preheat the oven to 400 degrees and we're going to pop that in and we'll be back soon. Alrighty then. Alright guys, so for the, uh, for the corn griddle cakes, we're going to start with this big bowl, uh, that is two cups of this stone ground cornmeal. Uh, we're going to put that in a bowl. I've already measured that out. Then we're going to take um, two teaspoons of baking powder. There we go. And then one teaspoon of salt. No, that's not right. That was only one teaspoon, it was quarters. Oh, 
Okay, um. Okay. So, you get your baking powder, you get your salt, you get your cornmeal. You're going to take that and lightly whisk it together. Then, in a separate bowl, we're going to take one cup of water and one egg. Boom. And then we're going to lightly whisk that together. And then we are going to uh, combine the ingredients using light strokes. I don't know how he's going to use light strokes. He heavy hands this stuff. Yeah, that looks perfect. All right, so you see that consistency? That's kind of what we're looking for here. It's not going to be quite as thin as pancake batter, but it will be thin. Now, keep in mind that while these are griddle cakes of a sort, there's no sugar or anything like that in them, so they're more on the savory side. They're definitely going to taste of corn, but that doesn't mean they're necessarily a savory thing. You can put butter and maple syrup on them, or you can use them to sop up meat gravy. It's kind of up to you. Um, so we've got our mix done, and now, uh, in a minute, we're going to bring it over to the stove and start cooking these up. See you then. All right, guys, so now we're going to do the corn cakes. So we're going to take a little bit of oil onto the pan. We wrap that market basket, motherfucker. That's right. More for your dollar. Appreciate your market basket. By the way, rest of the country, I don't think you have market basket, but you should. Also, they take care of their workers. Thank you. Unlike Stop and Shop. Mm hmm. So that strike is now over, but you know. The workers got some, they got some concessions, but at the end of the day, I still don't fuck with Stop and Shop on principle. Mm -hmm. Alright, so we're gonna let that heat up a little bit. Um, and once it does, we're gonna start ladling out. Hmm? Gonna start ladling out um, our mix, which is here. Um, yeah. Is there anything you need, darling? I would love my coffee. Okay, you want to get a nice even coating of oil on your pan. Uh, you might have to add more oil as you go along, depending on how many of these you're making. I think I'm going to make four. Okay. Maybe, maybe six. Four is fine with me, but if you want to make six, go ahead. I probably made too much mix, but oh well. Always better to have more than less. This is true. All right. I bought the Great Pirate Solomon that mug, by the way. Just saying. Probably should have heated this pan up a little bit first. Sufficiently heated now. So we're gonna start ladling some corn cakes up. Our Keurig is pissing behind him. 
Y'all hear that sizzle? That sizzle, yo. We're probably gonna do two at a time. Ooh, so now y'all know. I don't know if he's ever appeared, but y'all know the Great Fire of Solomon is white. Don't, don't give away my secrets. How? We've already been giving away your secrets, bruh. All right, so we want to probably cook these for roughly two minutes on each side. Two minutes each side. Would be his hype man. Just be the flavor flavor to his Chuck D. Loud in the kitchen. Loud in the kitchen. Great Fire Sullivan and Lady Columbia. So you're kind of going to want to wait for uh, the centers to be bubbling. That will kind of let you know that the one side is done. You can see it's already bubbling around the edges. We're going to let that go a little bit longer. Looking brown, but I would like it a little more brown on the other side. Yeah, and these are cooked to preference, guys. You might see it and think, that's brown enough for me. And you might be racist. I'm just <laughs> Y'all know my sense of humor. It's very like, right when you say you can't be edgy, but I'm edgy as fuck. Mm -hmm. No one ever seems to like say anything to me about it. I mean, how are they going to say anything to you about it? Mm -hmm. Technical difficulties, y'all. So, for future reference, guys, the fire alarm may go off. We may have to have the fan on. Forgive us. When you actually cook it, when you're not just making that good microwave shit like our dear War Corpse does, um, you might actually have a fire alarm go off. So, let me close the back porch window before the bees get in here. Open this window. Y'all, I'm going to be honest with you, this whole house needs some WD-40. Alright, so it's been about two minutes aside. They're about we're probably good. We're going to uh, cut now while we make another batch of these. And we will see you back for the finished product. Alright, oh Rooney then. But let me see, let me see that sexy plate though. That plate though. All right. Later, Ooh. guys. Now the corn cakes are done. We're gonna cook us some eggs. Fry them. Which Fried. is which is likely one of the more traditional ways to cook eggs because. Right. One, is super easy. Two, remember that spices are a vestige of the rich in medieval times. So people are probably just going to throw things like eggs on a grill. Um, you know, this, of course, is going to be to taste, preference. I tend to like my eggs sunny side up. Uh, get that nice runny yolk. Give me a plate for this. Coming in the shots, sorry guys. We got, yeah, a, we got a lot of moving parts going on here. Sorry guys, we've, we've had some technical difficulties early. We figured out how to you know, get the smoke alarm off for now, so that's good. Mm hmm. So if the house burned down, you can see that too. Now, you guys probably don't need an instructional on how to cook eggs, but... Yeah, know. give them one. Right. People don't fucking know. Just let it cook. For how long, though? Until it's done. What does that mean? You kind of have to just eyeball it and know what they look like. What do they look like? You kind of want, you know, most of the, like, you'll see there's still, like, 
running yolk, or running white, um, like over here. Mm -hmm. So you kind of want that to cook up before you take it off. All right, so I'm going to get a little closer here so everybody can see. Boom. Oh. Actually, get that up to the center or whatever so it cooks up. This is probably not the best pan to cook eggs in. Oh, well. Yeah. You want you definitely want a flatter pan like this is like um, it's got dents and divots in it. Yeah. Alright, well I will go ahead and take this one off. For me, it's running. This is exactly why I don't cook with this motherfucker. Bitch, you know how much half a, a quarter tablespoon of butter every time. That's why I'm fat and I'm proud. You got the big hands too, y'all, and egg cooking hands. I normally do scramble, by the way. I'm not. I'm like the queen of scrambled eggs. It's like we lost our yolk a little bit, but that's all right since you uh, prefer yours over hard anyway, or whatever. Not running. Yeah, not run. So for over easy, over medium, over hard, you're going to want to let it cook mostly on this side first, and then you're going to flip it and cook it on the other side, and that will firm the yolk up more. I think you can probably flip this thing. You guys going to hear weird noises. That's just me. All right. That's looking. That should be good. All right, so now we've got our eggs. <clears throat> One last thing to do, and then we'll have the finished product. So we'll see you in a bit. All right, so now we'll come back for the last bit. Um, we're going to toast some bread in the old-fashioned way, a little butter in the pan, and our good dark bread. This is a uh, Irish oatmeal bread. Figure they do film Game of Thrones in Ireland, parts of it, so it's fairly appropriate, right? Definitely. So you're not going to want to do this too long, obviously. Um, but I put some butter in the pan. And yes, this is, I am cooking this all in the same pan which is just how you would do it at a greasy spoon, or if you were a peasant in the medieval ages and you only had one pan. A little longer. Yes, everything will kind of, all the tastes will um, coalesce. It's like the secret of a good cast iron skillet anyways, you don't really ever wash it. A little bit on the other side, and uh, then we will be done, and we'll show you everything all done and plated up, and then we get to eat. Alright guys, so here's our finished product, we've got the apple cakes, some uh, Fresh sliced apples, because as my baby says... No medieval meal is complete without fresh fruit. We've got uh, an over hard egg and an over easy, or a sunny side up egg. We've got our bacon. Now that is again to preference. If you uh, are like our Lord Tyrion, you might want the edges burnt black, but we uh, did it this way. We've got our uh, toasted bread, uh, good dark bread, Irish oatmeal, and the corn cakes in the back. Um, how you might want to eat this all... Um, I would suggest, you know, especially if you have a runny egg, you can use the uh, one of the corn cakes to kind of sop up that yolk. Or, of course, you can use the bread. You could put the egg on the bread. Can we eat now? Shut up! But here you go, guys. This is Breakfast at the Wall. Thank you very much. Now, you will be getting a lot more from us in the Lefty Kitchen, so stay tuned. I'll be seeing you soon. Good night, good morning, good afternoon. Solomon out. Vala Mogulis. Vala Dohaitis. Mm -hmm.